Christmas has come early because Dana White has announced some fights for UFC 300 as well as a number of other interesting matchups coming up next year. Uh, Dana White going on social media last night and announcing all this and our buddy Aaron Bronsetter from TSN uh, outlining everything right here. So we'll quickly go over this and I'll get into each fight individually. And sorry I didn't get this out last night. There was like six minutes left in the Canucks game. I wanted to watch that instead and then I ended up going to bed. Uh, thank God I didn't because that ended up uh, being a really good uh, hockey game last night. But I uh, figured I'd get up early here today and get a video out. So let's start first with UFC 298. We've got Robert Whitaker and Paulo Costa. That's a big fight. Uh, Jeff Neal and Ian Gary, we already knew about, moves from UFC 299 to UFC 298. Uh, the Mexico City card, we knew about this already too. Uh, Yair Rodriguez and Brian Ortega, the rematch, five rounds. Like the fact this is five rounds considering the implications in the division. Uh, you've got Atlantic City, you've got Aaron Blanchfield and Man on your perfect fight here you know Blanchfield being a New Jersey girl uh, they're building her up obviously uh, to get uh, well I mean the winner of this will undoubtedly get a title shot and then you've got UFC 300 you've got Yuri Prohaska and Alexander Rakic that's a great fight you got Aljamain Sterling's debut at 145 taking on Calvin Cater and you've got Bo Nichols next opponent Cody Brundage let's start in reverse we'll go with UFC 300 uh, this is a huge fight I do wonder though and look I'm not complaining because I'm probably going to end up covering this card in April this is an absolutely amazing fight and I think it makes a lot of sense but I do wonder if the UFC considered doing this as like an international a uh, fight on an international card right like somewhere in Europe because this is such a huge fight and I'm glad it's on UFC 300 but I do wonder if this fight would have done a little bit better if they were doing it as a main event in you know I don't know somewhere in Europe because this I mean these are two huge fan bases Yuri who's Czech you've got um, Rakic who's Serbian but lives in Austria um, this is just a, a monumental fight and in terms of the rankings this makes a lot of sense so Rakic was supposed to fight Jan Blahovic. Uh, he's out it looks like they did not get a replacement well obviously they didn't get a replacement for him at UFC 297 which is kind of a bummer I figured they could have found someone um, even though we're you know coming up to about a month uh, just under a month uh, before fight time so that's kind of a bummer so I, I believe now Don Dominic Reyes and Carlos Olberg has now moved to the pay-per-view, which not a fan of, would rather see them get an opponent for Rakic. But either way, not going to complain that this is on UFC 300. Big fight for both guys. Rakic has not fought since the fight that he had against Jan Blahovic, where he was injured. Yuri Prohaska, obviously losing his title to Alex Pereira. Love this fight. Early pick on this one. You guys know which way I go usually when it comes to Yuri fights. I'm going to take Yuri here just because he's pretty damn durable. I know Bracket, or, uh, Pereira did finish him in his last fight, but um, I think overall Yuri's just a tricky matchup for a lot of fighters in the division, not to mention the layoff here for Rakic. Um, and just so people know as well, I was picking Jan Blahovic against Rakic as well. I think Rakic is great. I just, I'm really concerned about the layoff. So that's my thoughts on that fight there. Let's talk about uh, Calvin Cater and Aljamain Sterling. I like this fight. I don't love it. Um, I do find it a bit odd. Like usually when we have a fighter move up a weight class in a new division, they get a pretty marquee matchup. Although I guess saying that like this is almost like Alex Pereira moving up and fighting Jan Blahovic, right? Like Pereira was not the champion when he moved up, but he was the former champion. So he gets a, an opponent in Blahovic who's like top five. I think Cater's top five. And, and not to mention, there's a lot of fighters that are booked up right now, right? So, I mean, looking at featherweight right now, Calvin's number seven. So it might have just been an, a thing where they didn't have anyone else to really book him against. So I, I can understand that. Obviously, Max Holloway, I think they're waiting to see what happens with Taporia and Alex Volkanovsky. But yeah, I like this fight. Don't love it. Um, I want to say they've trained together a little bit. I know Cater's done some camps out in Vegas. I believe they've cross-trained just slightly, but um, not entirely sure on that. But yeah, good, good fight for both in terms of uh, what they can do. Obviously, if Cater wins, that's a win over a former UFC champ that always looks good on the resume Cater I don't believe has fought since the Arnold Allen fight right um yeah so it's it's a huge layoff for Cater coming into this one Sterling I, I do wonder with Sterling and I know there's a lot of politics at the top of 135 but I mean he he got knocked out in his last fight but he did a couple title defenses at 135 I do wonder like is this the end for him at 135 and if it is I kind of feel like this is a harder road to, to get a title shot, I think, than at 135. Although I guess you could make the argument, you know, you've got Sanhagen, Marab, you've got Umar, you've got all these names in the division right now that are kind of clogging things up. At least here, really, it's what, Holloway and... Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll, I'll walk back on that statement. Maybe it wouldn't be easier for him to get a title shot. It's just he had all that leverage being the champion. You think that would mean something. So as far as a pick on this fight, I generally go with the fighter that's been in the weight class longer. So I think I will go with Calvin Cater, especially adding in the fact that he's tough to finish. You know, he did get stopped in his last fight, but that was more of an injury. I think a Cater decision might be the best way to go. I think he can deal with uh, Sterling's wrestling. And I think in the feet, I think Cater's the better striker, not to mention he'll be the bigger guy in this fight a little bit. Um, yeah, so he'll be a little bit taller and a bit of a reach at both one inch reach in this fight. So yeah, I'd go Calvin Cater on this fight. Okay, next fight, Bo Nickel, Cody Brundage. Uh, look, I'll say this right off the bat. Love Cody Brundage. Great guy. One of my favorite fighters to interview. One of the nicest guys you'll ever meet in this industry. 
I wanted more of a step up here for Bo Nickel. And it's not to slight Cody Brundage. It's just if Bo Nickel, like if we're trying to build this guy up as like the next big thing at 185, he needs to fight a ranked opponent at this point. This is I, this is better than Val Woodburn, right? Um, I, I think Brundage is maybe a little bit better than Jamie Pickett, but honestly, like I think Bo Nickel should be fighting like a Brad Tavares or someone ranked. I think that makes a lot more sense in terms of his trajectory, in terms of his uh, you know movement up the middleweight division here. Um, Because I think Bo Nickel probably wins this fight, right? And I think if he does, we don't learn a whole lot because Brundage is a guy, and again, I'd say this to him if I was interviewing him as well, he's kind of a guy that's, you know, sort of holding on to his job just barely. He is coming off a good win in his last fight, and he's got more experience. But I would like to see Nickel against more of a veteran here than than a Cody Brundage. Uh, Even age-wise, like, Brundage is only a year older. I I personally would like to see uh, him fight someone a little bit more. I'm going to take Bo Nickel here. I think this is by design. Obviously, you're not going to put Bo Nickel on UFC 300 to lose. Maybe that's it, too. Maybe they want another highlight real maybe he is not as active as enough as they'd like but yeah I th- even like an Andre Meniz like maybe like that's at least a fight where we get to learn a little bit about him because at least Meniz has been in the rankings so yeah not a huge fan of this fight but it'll it'll be fun to watch uh these two compete and hey for Brundage what an opportunity here he can go out here and surprise a lot of people you know the story with Brundage is in the gym he's an absolute killer on fight night you know sometimes he looks really good and he gets big wins like he did in his last fight but then there's other fights where you know he, he falters so uh it's a good test here for brundage and i know the ufc likes brundage a lot too he takes a lot of short notice fights so probably very or very understandable why he's getting this opportunity so that's ufc 300 so far so good we'll see what the order is dana said first fight of the night is going to be an amazing you know could be a main event so we'll see where all these fall on the card very happy about that okay let's talk uh quickly about uh yeah we'll go in reverse here uh blanchfield and fjord Love this fight. Makes a lot of sense. A lot of people are like, why aren't these women getting the next title shot? Well, they're going to do Grasso and Shevchenko, the trilogy, just with the way the last fight ended in a draw. Not surprising there. Don't mind that. Again, these are two relatively young fighters. Well, more so Blanchfield, not Fjord, but Blanchfield's young enough where it's like there's no rush to get her to a title shot. Uh, I like Blanchfield all day in this fight. Uh, I, I'm very high on both. Um, I think with Blanchfield, there's more potential. I think with Fjord, she's getting good wins, but Blanchfield sort of has that X factor. And I know you know it wasn't an easy fight in her, la- in her last one against Santos, but I think Blanchfield can put it together and get it done. So I'm going to break my curse of picking against Blanchfield in the last two fights, and I'm going to take her here by decision to get it done over Manon Fjord. Okay, what other fights do we got? Uh, Ortega and Rod- uh, and Brian Ortega and uh, Yair Rodriguez. I know some people don't like this fight. I'm not a fan of Ortega still being in the rankings after being out for so long. I'm with you guys there. Um, I don't mind this fight. I-, I thought, you know, again, the last fight ended in, in somewhat of an injury. Uh, I would like to see... I mean, the UFC sort of did this already, Will, or attempted to do this with Jan Blachowicz and Alexander Rakic. I think the same thing applies here. It's an interesting fight. I do wonder with Ortega, the layoff, how that's going to affect him. He's 33. He's definitely wasted a lot of uh, time in his uh, prime right now being out. And Rodriguez coming out that loss to uh, Alexander Volkanovsky. Uh, he gets a win here. I think he's right back in the contender seat. If Ortega wins, yeah, then we, we can see a little bit more from him. But we just haven't seen a lot of Ortega over the last little bit. And that's really, I think, hurting his career. I got to go Rodriguez here. Just with the activity level, I think he also takes the decision. Maybe gets a finish here as well. Um, this is five rounds. So glad that this is sort of they're treating this as a contender's fight, which is great. Uh, so there's that one. And then uh, what do we got? We got Neil and Gary. I uh, love this fight. I know some people wanted to see the Vicente Luque fight rebooked. I'm happy with this fight getting made. I like Jeff Neal here. You guys know this. Um, even going into their first fight, I like Jeff Neal. I think Neal, when he is on, when he's focused, when he's not missing weight, when he's, I mean, granted that happened in one fight, but uh, when Neal's on, he's very tough to, to defeat. I mean, let's not forget, I know it's a couple of years ago, but Jeff Neal does have a win over Bilal Muhammad. Like that's a win that has aged quite well. Um, he's had some setbacks, but I think a lot of that was health related. If you saw the Jeff Neal that fought Vicente Luque, I think that fighter can beat Ian Gary. So I'm going Jeff Neal here. I think Jeff Neal can knock out Ian Gary. Gary does get hit a bit. Neal has knockout power. I could see it happening. I know optically Neal's a bit older, and I'm sure he's going to be the underdog here. And you're already seeing 60% of people picking Ian Gary. Good. I keep it that way. I'll take Jeff Neal at plus money. I like him here a lot. And it's and again, Gary's got a lot to deal with outside the cage too. That's got to affect him to a certain degree in this fight. So it's even more reason to like Jeff Neal here. Uh, last fight. Let's hope it happens. Uh, there, I mean, Paulo Costa has just been, you know, Mr. Like, just can't get to a fight. And there's a variety of reasons for that. I do think he gets unfairly criticized. I remember everyone said Paulo Costa should get cut because they took him out of the Ikram fight only to find out that they had just rebooked him against Hamzat Chimaev. So it's like, relax, guys. Um, but yeah, this is a marquee fight. I think this makes a ton of sense. It's two fighters who 
have failed at, I mean, in the case of Whitaker, he obviously lost his last fight with Paulo Costa. Um, you know, he needs some momentum here. Well, I, I don't know where Costa fits in the division. Like part of me thinks a Brendan Allen would beat him. Another part of me thinks, well, you know, he can probably still hang with some of these top guys. We're going to find out in this fight. I think this is actually perfect matchmaking. Let's hope it happens. Let's hope, there's, let's hope there's no issues here. Um, but yeah, Whitaker really needing to bounce back after that loss to uh, Duplessis. That was very surprising, that result. And with Paulo Costa, like, he's just got to fight. Like, he was supposed to fight Chimaev. I still think that fight would have been close, um, you know, on paper. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Fresh matchup, good fight. When were they supposed to fight again? I think it was... Uh, I'm just going to look here. It's a couple years ago. Um, yeah, 2021, they were supposed to fight. So, glad to see this get rebooked. These are two of the biggest names in the middleweight division. I'm going Whitaker here. I'm not going to pick Robert Whitaker. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to pick against Robert Whitaker against most middleweights in the division. The guy's an absolute stud. And, uh, you know, again, I'm not writing him off just because of a bad performance against Duplessis. I'll take that any day over Paulo Costa, who I don't think looks that, looked that great. He didn't look that good against Luke Rockhold. He didn't look that good in, in you know, obviously the Vittori fight where he just out of the blue is like, yeah, we're fighting at 205. So those are, uh, yeah, I mean, Costa could surprise us, but just based off what we've seen and the fact that he doesn't fight that much, I got to go Robert Whitaker here all day. So there we go. That's everything for the fights that were announced. Uh, I'm sure we're going to get more fight announcements during the holidays, and I will certainly do videos on this. And uh, yeah, if the Canucks aren't playing, uh, my Vancouver Canucks, then I will do these right away. But I just, you know, last night I'm watching the game. I'm like, I'm not leaving this. And granted, the, 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 my team lost in overtime. But uh, yeah, I'm going to, uh, you can always wait till the next day to talk about these things. So I want to know what you guys think in the comment section below. All those fights I mentioned. First, do you think those are the fights to make? If you disagree, let's hear why, what fights you would like to see instead. Like I said, the only one I maybe would have done differently is doing Bo Nickel against someone else other than Cody Brundage. That's sort of my only one. Other than that, don't really have an issue with the rest of the fights. And what are your your early predictions not your picks your predictions i would like to hear from you how you think some of these fights play out again i'm initially reacting to this so anyone being you know being the well actually people going to argue with me about certain things i've said in this video just know that i'm just like looking at this at face value i haven't really dug into any of these matchups too extensively follow me on twitter x uh instagram tiktok threads you name it. I'm everywhere at Lynch on sports. Follow me there. If you guys have any other video ideas, let me know. I'm going to have some award stuff coming up here soon as well. So keep your eyes on that. And thanks for watching till the end of the video. I really appreciate it.